here in Alabama. A group of men and women remember a time in history that was more terrible than most of us can imagine. It happened to them and to their parents and grandparents and brothers and sisters. It happened to them for just one reason, because they were Jewish. We call it the Holocaust, which is a word that means a sacrifice by fire. The Holocaust took place in Europe over a period of 12 years beginning in 1933. A dictator named Adolf Hitler came to power in Germany and he hated the Jewish people. He blamed the Jews for all of the ills that had befallen Germany. He and his followers, called Nazis, set out to eliminate the Jews. He influenced many people to join him in his hatred and become perpetrators of the Holocaust. They succeeded in killing over six million Jews, two-thirds of the Jews living in Europe at the time. The Nazis also targeted other groups that they perceived to be racially inferior, like the Gypsies, Slavic people from Poland and Russia, and the disabled. Other groups, such as communists, socialists, homosexuals, and Jehovah's Witnesses were persecuted because of their political or ideological beliefs or even their lifestyle. Not all of the victims were Jews, but all of the Jews were victims, from the very young to the very old. Jews who experienced life under the Nazi regime and survived are called Holocaust survivors. Many of them were children or young people at the time. Before the Holocaust, they went to school, they hung out with their friends, they did their homework, and they teased their brothers and sisters. They dreamed about what the future might bring, and they slept soundly in their beds at night. But the Holocaust changed all that. Jewish children experienced things that no child should ever have to experience. Fear and terror became commonplace. Laws were passed to isolate the Jews from their neighbors and restrict their livelihoods. Many Jews lost their jobs. They could no longer enjoy simple pleasures like going to the park, the movies, or the swimming pool. They couldn't even shop in non-Jewish stores. Eventually, Jewish children were not allowed to attend public schools. Jews were required to sew a Star of David onto their clothes so everyone would know they were Jews and would avoid them. Jews were ridiculed and humiliated. Most of their neighbors ignored what was happening. They didn't want to get involved. They didn't want to put themselves and their families at risk. These bystanders didn't take a stand against the wrongs they were seeing all around them. Taking it a step further, the Nazis began forcing many Jews to live in walled-off neighborhoods known as ghettos. They were not permitted to return to the towns and cities where they had once lived. Living in overcrowded, unhealthy conditions, many Jews died of starvation and disease. And it got worse. The Nazis began to deport many Jews to concentration camps where parents were separated from their children and children were separated from their siblings. Some were forced to work as slave laborers and many died of starvation, sickness, and exhaustion. That's the last time I saw my mother. We have to go on a death march. We all gonna die. It was like a nightmare. Others were randomly shot by soldiers or killed by poison gas. It was a time of great terror, suffering, and grief. Miraculously, some Jews survived against all odds. Some were protected and hidden from the Nazis by kind and caring people who were willing to risk their lives to help the Jews. Meep Gies was a Dutch woman who helped hide Anne Frank and her family. There were many, many others whose names are not known, but who are remembered. 
Today, these rescuers are known in Israel as righteous among the nations. The Holocaust was a genocide, the deliberate and systematic destruction of an ethnic, racial, religious, or national group. Genocide doesn't just happen. It begins innocently enough, with simple biases that separate us from them. Insensitive remarks and exclusion are the first steps. Without intervention, these attitudes can escalate into prejudice and acts of discrimination, further isolating one group from another. Eventually, violence can erupt and can ultimately lead to systematic elimination. When Holocaust survivors began telling their stories after World War II, their call to action was never again. They painfully shared their experiences in the hope that there would never be another Holocaust and that others would never again have to endure the pain, suffering, and loss that they carried with them always. Unfortunately, genocide did not end with the Holocaust. In the 1970s, there was Cambodia. In the 1980s, Guatemala and Iraq. In the 1990s, Bosnia-Herzegovina and Rwanda. In 2005, Darfur. Today, as Holocaust survivors become fewer and fewer, we bear the burden of ensuring that never again becomes a reality. To do this, we must stand up for what is right, not just for ourselves, but for all of humanity. During the Holocaust, we saw what happens when people do nothing to right the wrongs they see around them. As philosopher Edmund Burke said, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. Whether you're a young person or an adult, you have the power to impact the world by standing up against prejudice, hatred, and indifference. Why do we remember the Holocaust? We remember the lives that were lost, and we honor the men and women who survived and shared their stories. While we remember the past, we must also protect our future. We must stand up for what is right,